our church here. And I kind of gave you an overview of it. And this week we're going to start with going through piece by piece on what our vision statement is. So again, the three pieces of our vision statement are connect, pray, and love. First piece we'll start with is, of course, connect. Connect to the world around us. Now, both of the texts from this morning talks about unity, about connection, doesn't it? It talks about how when there is a cord, when it's joined together, two are better than one. And three together are not easily or quickly broken. When they're tied together, when they're intertwined, they cannot be broken. God wants us to be in community. He wants us to be in connection with everybody. He wants us in connection. Because, let's be honest, we know that there's strength in numbers, don't we? You know, I got to thinking about life from beginning to end. And I have figured out that human beings are a lot like a bouncy ball. I was really praying I could catch that. <laughs> I'll be honest, I was practicing earlier. <laughs> but we're like bouncy balls. In fact, when you're born, how many of you have heard the phrase, it's a bouncing baby girl or a bouncing baby boy, right? We all heard that. We all heard that. When we are born, we bounce into our parents' arms, right? And when you're holding an infant, what do you do? You bounce them, right? And then as we get into toddlerhood, you, well, I know for a fact I've seen it, have kids literally bouncing off the walls, <laughs> bouncing from here to there. When you get a, an owie, what do you do? You bounce into mom and dad's arms to get that all-important band-aid, whether you really need it or not. And here's the thing. As we grow, we bounce from place to place. Some bounce up the steps to the school bus on the first day of school. Some, not all. <laughs> Before we know it, we're into the real world. And maybe we're bouncing into college or maybe the military, or a job. Then we, we bounce along the streets of life, and maybe, eventually, we bounce into those mud puddles. You ever bounce the ball into a mud puddle? What happens? You just, first you have a big splash, and then it just stops, right? It doesn't bounce, it doesn't bounce. When you get mired, when you get sucked down by those things in life that cause you problems. But a lucky or maybe smart few bounce into our church doors and come in and bounce into God's grace, where we finally land at the foot of the cross. We bounce from life experiences. Good and bad. We bounce. Maybe we bounce off the walls a little bit, but we bounce. We all come in, though, with wounds. And depending on how big a wound it is, more often than not, if you get a bouncy ball with maybe a little scratch or something, it still bounces just fine, doesn't it? God wants us to bounce. I think God wants us to experience the bounce. But very often we come in with scars. We come in with nicks. And quite honestly, how many of you remember the, the TV show MASH? I love MASH. I don't know how many times I've watched the entire series. I love it. A church should be like a mash. People coming in with wounds, 
with gashes. Some coming in with wounds you don't think they're going to survive from. And yet, and yet, our great physician can fix it. Our great physician is like the Hawkeye. The perfect physician. But here's the thing. As great a doctor as a Hawkeye for MASH was, anybody tell me something that he could not do? He couldn't do it alone. He had to connect. He had to be with nurses and other doctors, just like us. We're called to a connection with everybody. We're called to connect to the world around us. We're called to be in connection. We are not called to live life solo. Christ himself had people around him all the time. From beginning to end, Christ always was around people, always connected. And let's be honest, if you look at the disciples, these are not people you would put at the top as great examples of followers. Would you? I mean, look at it. You had, you had Peter, who was a hothead. You had Matthew, who was a tax collector. Most of the rest of them were fishermen that their level of education wasn't real high. And yet, Christ connected with them. He picked them. He connected with them. He didn't say, well, you're not quite meeting my job requirements. Have a nice day. You know, there is a story told of this gentleman who got, this was back a while ago, who had just gotten a new TV. And he had a new antenna to put on his roof. Remember that? You remember those days, folks, when you had an antenna on your roof? <laughs> Actually, we still have one. So uh, we don't use it, but we still have one. And so as neighbors do, his neighbors came to help him and his wife get the antenna on the roof. And let's just say the neighbor's hearts were fuller than their toolboxes because they really didn't have the tools to do the job. So they're kind of like, I, I, how much duct tape you got type thing. I mean, they had no idea what they're doing until a new neighbor showed up, just moved into the area. And it was, it was like one of those Holy Grail moments. He opened his toolbox and it was just full. They had everything. It was stuff they didn't even know what he did with. And they were able to put it up in record time because of his help. And as they stood around afterwards, and guys, you know how it is, especially us guys, we're sitting around after a job's done, and we're talking about it, kind of got the chest pumped out a little bit. Yep, that's good in the antenna. Yep, we're going to get lots of channels on that. And they talked to this, this new neighbor, and they said, What's with the, the toolbox? What do, you, what do you make with all these tools? And he said, well, friends, mostly. <laughs> That's valid, isn't it? That's valid. I like that. So the idea was we come together. We connect with each other. We make friends in maybe ways we don't think about. We make a connection. There's an uh, English poet from the 18th century named Edward Young. And he said this, A faithful friend is an image of God. A faithful friend is one of life's greatest assets. That's what we're called to be, people. We're called to be friends. We're called to make connections with people 
that maybe even are different than us. I know, scary thought, right? We're supposed to make friends with different people? Yes, we are. Dietrich Bonhoeffer is one of my absolute favorite authors. Uh, he's an amazing writer. Um, if you haven't had a chance, I've mentioned him before, look him up though. But he had a, a book called Life Together, and he wrote this. Innumerable, innumerable times, a whole Christian community has broken down because it is from simply from a wish dream. The serious Christian, set down for the first time in the Christian community, is likely to bring with him a very definite idea of what Christian life together should be and to tr try to realize it. But God's grace subtly shatters those dreams, just as surely as God desires to lead us to knowledge of genuine Christian fellowship. So whelmed by great disillusionment with others, with Christians in general, and if we are fortunate with ourselves, by sheer grace, God will not prevent us to live, even for a brief period, in a dream world. So here's the deal. We are, are not to just pay lip service to a Christian <laughs> community. We're supposed to be intentional. We're supposed to be real about it. About those connections, we have to be real. Be honest. Be ourselves. We have to live our lives that are full of grace for others, as Christ did with us. We have to love one another genuinely, honestly, openly. Not based on conditions or positions or appearances, social status, even personality. Based solely, though, on the fact that we're all children of God. It's interesting. I, I haven't done a lot of weddings. I've done a few. Um, but what's interesting is one of the biggest issues, I guess, that, that couples deal with, from what I understand, is the guest list. Anybody remember doing a guest list for their wedding? Was there any struggles? I, I really don't remember us having too many, basically because I don't have a lot of friends. Um, so it wasn't a problem. But um, from what I understand, that's kind of a big issue, doing the guest list. And it's interesting because they have to struggle. They have to figure out who are they going to invite or maybe who are they not going to invite. Because... I mean, we all have family and friends that we love, but, you know, there's, there's Cousin Sally that nobody really likes anyways, and then there's Uncle Joe that can't stay away from the bar to save his life. And then you remember sister-in-law Lucy, who had the whole issue with the lack of nacho cheese last wedding. But there's issues, right? We have to figure out our guest list. But there's a difference between this guest list and what God makes. You see, God has a guest list. Revelation 19.9 says, And the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Hmm. I don't remember if there being much of a restriction there. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. There's a guest list. Isn't that what it's saying? It's saying there's a guest list. God had called us into a relationship with himself, a connection with him. He's chosen us before the earth was even created. We're to be members of the body of Christ. We've been invited to a wedding of sorts. Only we're guests. We're on the guest list. We're not making the list. God is the one who makes the list. Romans 8, 28 to 30. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined 
to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Let's be honest. If we had our way, that guest list to God's wedding would look quite a bit different, wouldn't it? It would look different. We'd probably leave off people who irritated us, people who made us uncomfortable, people of a different social or financial situation than us, and then there's people we just don't like. But here's the thing about God's guest list. God likes diversity. God likes difference. I mean, look around you. God likes daisies. God likes roses. God may even like a few nuts in his garden. I don't know. But God's guest list, the ones he invites, are not all going to look, act, or think the same way. We don't get to choose who comes through those doors. We don't. If we are a church serving Jesus Christ, we don't get to pick who comes through those doors. It's true, right? I mean, can anybody tell me somebody who we should allow in? Because we're going to chit chat if, if you do come up with something. Because we don't. We don't get to pick. God does. Now, that doesn't mean that the people who come through that door, including us, don't need correction. That we don't need to change some things about ourselves to come more in tune with God. Now, I understand there is a big difference there. Because I guarantee you, nobody came through those doors perfect. And if y'all didn't come through perfect, and I'm counting myself in that too, we can't expect anybody else to come through perfect. We all are called together to be in connection, to connect with whoever comes through those doors. And here's the scary part. We're also supposed to connect to everybody outside of those doors. Ooh, that's the part that gets scary, isn't it? Because here it's safe. Here it's pretty much figured out. If you're coming in here, you kind of sort of maybe want to know about this Jesus guy. Outside the doors, you have no idea. You may have no idea, and that's okay. It's scary. It's intimidating. I'm a pastor, and there's awkward moments for me. And people know what I do for a living. But we're not supposed to be quick to judge or correct until we know the situation, until we know who they are and what they are, and what they're seeking. We're called to be in unity. My other scripture from this morning talks about unity, too. Did you pick up on that? It talks about how we're supposed to be unified and connected together. I talked about bouncing through life. I'm not going to tempt fate and try to bounce it again. <laughs> <laughs> we're supposed to bounce through life. But here's the thing. We're not supposed to bounce through life alone. We're supposed to be in connection. Now, whether it be a good, Christly friend, <coughs> or spouse, or a parent, or a child, I don't know. We're supposed to be in connection. Connection with everybody. We need to celebrate the unity that God has created. And not deny that unity. We can't look at somebody and say, you need God, but I'm not, that's not for me to do. If God put them in your path, it's your job. You've been picked. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, because I'll be completely and totally honest, there are some people that if God hadn't put them in my path, there's no way I'd been anywhere near them. I'm glad I did, though. I'm glad God did. 
Because I've made some amazing friends. Some amazing godly friends. Because God put them in my path. And I made a connection with them. So remember that. Remember that connection. That's how, friends, we are going to make a difference <coughs> in this community. Is by our connection. We are not going to make connections by printing up a hundred pamphlets and handing them out. We're not going to make connections by me posting stuff on Facebook. We're not going to make connections that way. I mean, it's, it's a good tool, but it's not going to make any connection. The connections are made one-on-one. -on -one. Are you ready to connect? Because if you say you are, you can't pick and choose that. I, I tried it. You can't pick and choose. If you say I'm willing to connect for God, then be ready for what God has planned for you. So to help you remember to bounce through life, I have a little basket back there. Everybody gets a bouncy ball. <laughs> Just one for me. <laughs> 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 but take that and remember to bounce through life but also remember if you look at these little balls they got little glitter pieces in there all those glitter pieces are bouncing together <coughs> together connected in unity bounce together through life there's some amazing things happening. You bow your heads with me, please. Lord God, let us be in unity. Let us be in connection. Most importantly with you, Lord God, but also with those others around us. Everyone, let us be in connection with. In Jesus' name.